My name is Joseph Njeroge Wanyoike. Uh, back in MCF, famously known as Njoro. Um, I am a founder and director of Global Hope Rescue and Rehabilitation Center. And I am MCF senior beneficiaries. Back in early 1980, uh, born in Eldoret, in a slum called Kamkunji in a family of a single mother who um, was addicted to alcohol. Uh, there was no provision of basic needs in the house. There was no education at my childhood. There was no access to good health. There was no uh, access to good clean water, clothing, um, and all that basic needs that any other kids would have to do. In a small house of three by three meters, a shady house in the slum. Um, my mother could get drunk and could not provide for us food. And my elder brother goes to the streets and I follow him when I was at the age of uh, between six and seven years. I started my life in the street as a street boy in Eldoret. Um, I started sniffing glue. I was introduced to the street life. I was introduced to stealing. I was exposed to violence. I needed love and I never got love. I stayed for two years without visiting my home. I did everything for survival. I tried to steal and I met people who had a lot of wrath to me, who punished me severely, mob justice. I knocked to many houses to ask for food. I never got them. I became an enemy of people and the public in the street. I got a lot of harassments by the police. I never had a father. I loved to have a father, but I was not connected to any father. And my life was very bad, going to prison. At my, before I got 10 years, a kid's prison, I got a lot of mistreatment, child labor, um, no food, no school. And that, was, that life wasn't very good. Every time I prayed, that I could get a place to go and have education. I begged from people for survival and they showed me wrath any time. Until this one great day when I meet this great man, I can say out of millions of people that I met in the street, this man showed me love one time by feeding me in the street freely. Not leftovers food, but bread and milk from the shop, from the supermarket. And he feeds me together with other street kids, not once or twice, but many times. And my heart start to think about this man. At one time he comes to the street as usual to tell me the love of God, though I never believed that God existed because I, ne I never knew how I could live, how, how I could live a pathetic life without going to school, without a lovely mother, without a good home, while other kids in the community go to school and they have other basic needs. And this man called Dr. Moli shares about the love of God. I never believed that God existed. But this man showed me the love of God. And he was telling me that perhaps I'm willing to change my life. My life he is willing to give me an opportunity in life. And just a way of pleasing him, I also said yes. Though inside my heart, I really wanted to come of this life. Dr. Muli rescues me from the street and he takes me to his own house. Remember, I was one of the boys who was not very close to water because I never showered. One of my greatest enemies that time was water. And because of the decency that I received from Dr. Muli, slowly by slowly, I started taking shower and becoming decent. I was introduced to simple uh, ethics like washing my hands before eating, shaving my hair, cleaning, putting on, changing my clothes and washing, becoming responsible, learning how to pray, going for devotions and interacting with other kids. And I started growing. And I remember Dr. Muli showing me 
the love of God together with Mami Esther. And they start giving me um, hopes that I can get to school. I remember when I joined the school the first day, I never got anything from teachers. I had a lot of street life in me. It could be very easy for me to go back to the street for one month than to settle in classroom for one day. I remember any time I got homework, classwork, I forced my teachers to understand me. I never put myself to their shoes to understand them. I thought any time that I could, I could solve all my problems by running back to the street. I went back to the street many times. I remember Daddy came for me at night, not once, not twice, but many times. There are many times I met a gang, a group of crazy boys in Dalani, and we could steal so many things from people just because I wanted to take drugs. It was very difficult for me to stay even one single day without sniffing marijuana. Daddy knew about it. Mommy knew about it. But one thing I can confess to you today, there is no day in Muli children's family I was judged. There was no day, even, even one second, I had Daddy saying, you are beyond repairs. He always told me, go, continue moving, you can make it. He always replaced, replaced my bad behaviors with good things. Imagine I played football, soccer in MCF, the first 11 team, because Daddy told me, you look like you can play football. I want you to go and try play football today. Daddy inserted music in me, and I started even playing musical instruments from nowhere. And I started playing musical instruments like keyboard and guitar, and I could even compose songs to sing because Daddy was trying to replace, to, to replace my bad behaviors with good things. I started getting something in education because before some teachers used to ask me some questions. What is the highest mountain in Kenya? I could answer with things that I know in the street. Drugs, the kind of drugs we used to take in the street called the Black Mercedes. That was very bad life. But because of the love of God and being catered for, brought together, I learned how to stay with other people. I learned to love. I continued loving my teachers and I could get off that life after so many years and I started understanding what God means. And that is how I got transformed slowly by slowly and got off primary school education with a good grade and Daddy gave me another chance to join high school in Muli Children's Family. It was not an easy journey though. I tried when I was in high school, I went again, I went off and continued with bad life. But Daddy continued loving me. Sometimes he could come to pick me in prison and give me another chance until this time when I accepted Jesus Christ when I was almost completing high school. And it was a funny thing because many people didn't believe that Joe, Joseph can get saved. But with the time, I kept on learning and becoming closer to God, reading the Bible and practicing slowly by slowly. I got a lot of responsibility and therefore I completed high school and got a good grade. What happens after my high school? I talk to daddy. Daddy, he tells me, I will not despise you. I've walked you in this journey and you are among the best boys that have rescued from the street. And I believe that you can do better even in college. Daddy finds later a good college for me in Eldoret to undertake a course in mechanical engineering for three years. Imagine a boy who used to sniff, a boy who was addicted with the drugs, a boy who could not listen to anybody. Now he goes to undertake a mechanical engineering course, a course that is not easy to manage. And daddy prayed for me. He paid all my school fees. He catered for all my needs in the college and I went well and I can tell you today in the college that I went I was among the best student that is even remembered up to this day. I graduated successfully with my diploma after three years and I came back to Delani. Daddy was very happy. Daddy was willing to give me an opportunity to work at MCF. Daddy really wanted me to help other children but I felt like I had already grown and I had to go out and find my own life so that I can create another chance for other kids to come there. And I went back to Nairobi and I applied for a job as a mechanical engineer 
and I got that job and I worked but not for a very long time I met street children again and that thing clit in my hand my heart and my mind about my similar past I remembered about how I lived a miserable life I remembered on how many time I knocked at people's shops and doors for help I remembered how many times people kicked me people banged me people uh, punished me severely because of my 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 life I was staying because of I did not have a lawyer I did not have a parent until when daddy came for me and he showed me the love of god that thing clicked on by to my head and I cried for a long time thinking on how to do it and slowly by slowly I started ministering to street boys and street kids in Nairobi from back the year 2020 2028 2009 2010 I was volunteering with other organization in rescue and rehabilitation of street kids until 2012 when i came to this region called ngong and established a football club for street boys i was the main coach of the team i can tell you many people mocked me and people couldn't believe that street kids can play football they were so dirty they were coming with glue and drugs in the field but when they came we talked and we prayed we shared a meal and we played football and these boys started opening up to me telling me the miserable life they live the reason why they go to the street and out of it all it was similar to my past i opened up with them and shared my past and i told them who i am and where i came from i told them about muli children's family and how god touched my life and we had a deal with them that they have to go back to school they have to start afresh it was not an easy journey we got a lot of judgment from the community people said that these boys are criminal i could not manage them they judged us but looking at daddy and what daddy muli and mommy esther did for us it was not a difficult journey to start therefore we had in 2013 we had to start a home these boys want to go to school they want to go back they really want to transform but they cannot transform when they live in the street so we had to look for a simple house in the slum called madare in gong we started together with my wife with the six boys from the street with small help and support from some teachers some kids got to school and they started performing very well and i remember one of our boys getting 381 marks out of 500 that was later adopted by daddy muli in mcf and he's now in university the community started saying oh so these boys can change these boys we know them they look very clean they have manners i think we can start supporting joseph by supporting his project they started praying for us and i went to daddy again and talked to daddy for prayers daddy has always stood with me when i told him about food he said the issue of food will be solved by muli children's family and that is has been done for the last i don't know how many years since this this center was started we continue bringing many boys until 2015 when we came here with a capacity of 43 boys and we kept we kept on going to the street reaching many kids these kids who don't understand things these kids who take drugs these kids who don't want to listen to people we brought them here and we continue praying them to to them showing them the value of following Jesus Christ we talked that he has been visiting us mcf coming here and we the boys continued changing until this time we have managed to reach 150 former street kids with others that we support as they live in their homes we have been able to reach over 15 boys that we have rescued from the prisons all over Kenya to bring them here to give them another opportunity of life we have been able to rescue more than 20 girls from the streets and they have always been given an opportunity to go to MCF to continue studying others single mothers others young mothers but because of the love of god they get a direct admission at MCF and they are doing very well 2 years ago god blessed us and we got a donation of a land in upper matasia about 8 kilometers from here and from that time we have been able to to drill a borehole there 250 meters down 
we have been able to set up a perimeter wall, we have been able to put a tower tank, and we are looking forward to build a home that can host even over 500 boys. And that is the big dream, because now we are not able to rescue many street kids, because this place is so much congested with boys sharing bed. Imagine three boys in one bed. It's too much. If we have a disease, it spread very fast, because we have many boys living in a very small portion of, of land. But when we get to that place, we are sure we are able to rescue even more than 1,000 kids living together, showing them the love of God. And this is the big dream of this home in line with Daddy Muli, Dr. Muli's vision of helping street kids in the entire world. We are looking forward and we are praying that if I have, we have shared with our dad about the vision, we have talked so much and it's in his heart because he talks, talks about it very much and is our prayer that in near future, near, near future, we are able to build a decent center, a home that can be able to accommodate so many street kids from the life of street. And therefore they are able to change their lives. We are able to give them a education there. We are able to give them a vocational training there such that they are able to get life skills, such that when they get out of that place, they are able to take care of themselves and furthermore, change the lives of other people. It's a very touching story about Dr. Muli and how much he gave to me. We always pray for dad because to me he's my dad, but to our boys here, he is their grandfather. And we pray that God keeps on giving him strength. He's getting old, 74 years old now, but he's still working so hard, tirelessly, to make sure that the boys we rescue from the street get everything that they need. It is not easy. It's not easy for someone to give me love for over I don't know how many years until now I'm an adult and I'm very proud saying I'm very happy and humbled and proud that I went through, through Muli Children's family to be mentored by such people. In this world, if you have ever met Dr. Muli and Mami Esther and the entire Muli Children's family, I can say you are very lucky because Muli Children's family is the family, is a house full of love of God that you can feel it. You can feel it. We feel it. Even the entire community in Gong can feel the love of God because of the work that Dr. Muli has done in this project called Global Hope Rescue and Rehabilitation Center that caters for street boys and young men from the streets all over Kenya. God bless you so much for listening to me and may God bless you and continue praying for us as we continue serving street children in our country, Kenya. Thank you.